right, this is chapter 13 lecture on delivery. So beginning with what nonverbal communication is, that is body language. That's how we communicate with our body. Verbal communication are, you know, the words that are used in our speeches. Think about figures of speech like similes, metaphors. However, nonverbal is how you deliver your message through your body. This can be eye contact, volume, posture, facial expressions. So as we can see on the image here, it's 35% of what people believe they believe verbal communication, uh, that percentage, and what they believe even more than words, even more than verbal communication is nonverbal communication. Uh, that is, again, that body language. This means that people are more persuaded by how a message is said as opposed to what the message says. Okay, it's more convincing, it's more persuasive to deliver a message with strong body language. Now let's talk about the methods of delivery here. Manuscript memory, impromptu and extemporaneous. Uh, manuscript slash note cards, this is when you have typed out, written out your speech and you read to the audience. We see politicians sometimes do this. I want you to remember though, for your first speech coming up, you are only allowed one three by five index card. That's the image that you see here. Uh, you will not be allowed to read from your final outline. And the reason for that is because eye contact will not be provided, not enough at least. Moving on to memory, this is probably the best form of delivery, one of the best forms, because your eye contact is very strong. You have your speech memorized by heart. However, the problem is that if you do forget something, any part of your speech, then you don't have a backup. You don't have anything to fall back on. Impromptu is little or no immediate preparation. Think about this as you being put on the spot. And extemporaneous is what we're doing in this class. That means that you have prepared your speech, uh, yet you still want to have that natural conversational style and you want to present from brief notes. Now, when we're talking about the speaker's voice, these are important features. Volume is the loudness or softness of voice. Whereas pitch is the highness or lowness of voice. Rate is how fast someone speaks or how slow someone speaks. Pauses are moments in your speech when you stop. A planned pause can be powerful. It's intentional, whereas a pause that is not prepared you'll see someone fidgeting or someone be nervous or even vocal fillers like um, er, uh. That brings me to this point here, vocalized pauses. These are filler words, okay? And you should try to avoid them as much as possible um, since they're really fluff words. Uh, vocal variety is how your voice changes from up to down or how the different emotions uh, come out in your speech. And this gives voice expressiveness. Pronunciation and articulation, uh, that's stated here, right? Pronunciation, accepted standard of sound, articulation, physical production of speech sound. And dialect is variety of language distinguished by accent, grammar, vocabulary. Think of this as how people speak in different regions in our country, right? Someone here from the West Coast 
will have a different dialect, will have a different accent than say someone from the East Coast. And there is also the speaker's body to consider. This is personal appearance, movement, gestures, and eye contact. We also have kinesics, and this is the study of body motion as mode of communication. So preparing for your upcoming speech, you wanna make sure that you adapt your pacing, that you're speaking at a good natural rate, um, that you're also standing still, you're not pacing back and forth or your legs aren't crossed. Of course, practice, 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 and try to have a backup plan, maybe an, another index card that's more brief or just some kind of note taking so that you will be prepared to speak. Of course, also check the speaking schedule to see when you actually present. Now, your first speech is coming up, so keep in mind when that final draft is due. You also need to make sure that you record your performance. This is so that you can complete your self-evaluation. And I will also be posting soon a document that states who you will provide feedback for. Okay, uh, in that, when I say provide feedback, you're going to listen to a handful of speeches. And for each speech, you will include the main points. You will include a positive and negative verbal and nonverbal. And then just some general thoughts on what you thought about the speech. All right, that wraps up this chapter here.